my name's Tracy and I'm a mortician and I'm Trish and I'm not and welcome back to another episode of are you dying to know because Trish is dying to know I am hi guys how Hello. are you all Hello. Hello. today everybody we have some questions surprise surprise thank you for sending them in everybody because we have lots but that's good because that's what we want we yeah. have lots you yeah. can keep sending them yeah we, I mean yeah and reminding us the ones we forget because we have such a big list that we, we could get reminded and we do try and get through them honestly we do we're loving it and we're loving it and we are trying to get to them all thank and, you thank you um, thank you joanna. question from joanna. Hi, joanna hi joanna how are you and joanna wants to know when you're embalming and you were talking the other day about your little fancy and you raise hook, hook and it's a little flat bottom on it yeah. and you have to raise the carotid artery. Yeah. How do you tell the difference between the carotid artery and the jugular vein? Oh, Say jugular vein for me, Trey. <laughs> the, <laughs> the jugular vein. The jugular vein. Jugular vein. <laughs> the juggler. The jugular <laughs> <laughs> Can go on for a hours. Big one there. Yeah. A big All right. One. How do you tell the difference? Okay. Okay. It's it's really quite easy when you um when you get in there and you make your little incision. Well, it's not sometimes really hard to find them, but when you find which is usually the juggler vein first, because that's usually sitting right there. In once you find the jugular, jugular, you know the carotid sitting right underneath it, or right next to it. They're right next to but each other. What if they're next to each other this way? They usually like ah. the jugular is usually slightly on top of the. I like how you say it because you just sort of let the end of the word go. Away. She just says jugger, jugger, <laughs> jugger. Yeah. Anyway, so the how you tell is you'll find the jugular vein and you know it's the vein because it's full of blood. Right. And it's blue and it's very thin. Okay. And if and when you touch it, it goes very flat. Right. And you push the blood out of it and it's just flat and thin and see throughy. And what's the carotid look like? And the carotid looks a bit like this, like elastic. Ah, okay. It's creamy, it's like yep. a creamy colour, it's thicker and it's similar colour to my elastic hairband and it's very stretchy. Okay. And it's quite thick and also you can tell also when you like it, it, it to cut into it a little bit to use before you put your cannula in, it'll have a lumen in, which is the inside of the uh, artery has a little lumen. So basically like another little artery inside. Ah. So you can tell and plus it'll not bleed. If you cut right. the jugular, you're, you're not going to find the carotid because there's blood going to come out everywhere. So we don't cut the jugular until we have ligated the carotid. Does that mean lift up? Sorry. Like it, it means putting um, oh, threads around, around it. it. Yep. So we've raised the jugular, we've raised the carotid, we like it both, so we'll tie both off so we don't lose them. And then when we uh, open up the uh, carotid to inject the embalming fluid in, after about three litres of embalming fluid's been in to build some pressure up, then we will open up the, the jugular, jugular vein and let it start to dry. Yeah, and put the uh, forceps down that you've seen in the yep. other video. That opens up that uh, vein and then the drainage will start coming right. out. So that's when yeah. we get the blood coming out. So they are very easy to uh, spot. Very interesting. One looks rubbery and one looks flat and blue. There you go. There you go. Thanks well, for your that's, question. That's thanks, cool. Joanna. Thanks, Trace. You're welcome. Okay. All right, so now we've got another question, and this yeah. one comes from Planty. Hi, Planty. Hi, Planty. And Planty wants to know uh, what are the protocols for moving bodies across the border when there's a lockdown like, oh, because of COVID? Oh, yeah, because we've had a lot of restrictions and now we're boarded just down the road, haven't we? Yeah. Um, I don't know the exact paperwork that you need because there is paperwork you do need, but yet we can transfer bodies across the lockdown border. You need your Form 9 to carry the body, obviously, that's on most transfers that we do. Um, you also, the drivers have to have the COVID test. They have to be, you know, just recently have a test and obviously negative and everything. And at the minute, it's not mandatory to have the jab yet. Um, but as long as you have the COVID test and you've got your pass to come through because it's an essential service, because you can't leave the body there when it has to be somewhere else for the process to happen for the funeral, uh, or if it's coming to the coroners from uh, New South Wales up to Queensland. It is, yeah. As long as um, it's essential 
uh, like the essential workers, you've just got to have your border pass, a proof that you uh, had a latest COVID test that's negative in the Form 9 to bring the body across. Um, that's it, basically. It's done. it's done. Yeah, it's simple. It's not confusing. Yeah, so, yeah, you All can right. still... Awesome. You can still transfer. Good to know. It is. What else? What else? Okay, so now we've got a question from Amanda, who's uh, a regular. Hi, Hello, Amanda. Amanda. How are Hi. you? Hope you're keeping safe and well. Yes, hope so. Um, Amanda wanted to know what happens when you have a large person, the trolleys that you showed us in that video, and I will point to that video yeah. on... Is this where I'm pointing? Yeah. Point to that video on transfers. Yeah. Um, shows the trolley is a standard size trolley. So if yeah. you've got a rather large person, is there something that you can do to help accommodate that, moving them in and out of the vehicle and transporting them? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the trolley that we have um, is called a bariatric trolley. So basically slightly bigger than the trolleys that you see there. Uh, we take them two trolleys out and put the bariatric trolley in. And it's a bit like, you know the ambulance ones you see it's just not as fancy as the automatic ambulance ones you press buttons on them and they're all automatic in in it's weighted to i think about 300 kilos to hold so it's it's a stronger thicker heavier slightly larger um stretcher than the ones you've seen on the video and they're just called bariatric stretchers so we don't put them together or anything we just have the one and it just holds the bigger weight. So what so, happens when you don't know that they're larger people when, until you get well, there? Well, normally when we do, um, a, say we get the call in, the, what we call the first call from a family member whose loved one's passed away, the question's asked. Oh, okay. It's always asked, is, you know, mum, dad, or whoever, uh, larger or smaller, if they go, oh, quite large, can you give us an idea of size? You know, so we try and gauge size yeah. before we uh, turn up anyway. Right. Yeah. And then if the person is, say, 200 kilos, then we can send two transfer teams out together because we'll need, like, four people to um, load onto the trolley because it's, you know, a, a bit of a heavy work and we don't want anybody injuring themselves and we yeah. obviously need to take care of the deceased as well. You know, so, um, yeah, so it's just a larger, heavier trolley called the bariatric trolley. Well, that's pretty yeah. straightforward, isn't it? It is, yeah. Okay, so, well, cool. And easy. I All think, right. I think we need a. Well, you have something to say, you. Yeah, but I think you've got a joke. From... I've got a couple of jokes from our friend Steve. If I can find my Hi, phone. Hi, Steve. Hi, Steve. How's your ribs holding up, oh, mate? Oh, poor Steve's had a bit of a prank. Oh, we had a nasty accident. Mm. So we're thinking of you, Steve, and yeah, hope that to get better and keep the physio up and all of that, lock. You know what I'm saying, lock. Yeah, he knows. He's... Steve made me laugh this morning. I needed a bit of a lift and I opened the emails and saw um, this. An old guy was watering his lawn when over the fence he saw his neighbour's seven-year-old daughter digging a hole in her flower bed. Aww. Hello, Lucy, he said. What are you doing? Oh, what's Lucy doing? I'm burying my goldfish, she Aww. told him. I'm sorry to hear your goldfish died. That's a large hole. Why are you digging such a big hole for a fish? Because it's inside your cat. <laughs> Do you want to hear the other one? Yeah, so another there's one. another Yay. one. Yeah, I like the other one, but the other one's a little bit blue. It's a little oh. bit, little bit, you know, about the nether regions. This one. Oh, oh. Um, oh but oh. it's we're not like Carl. You ready? Yeah, he's a bit, bit sensitive to these. Well, it? actually, I'm thinking it's a bit late. Oh, okay. <laughs> the wife came into the bedroom wrapped in a towel and gave me a saucy smile and said, "I just gave myself an intimate shave in the shower. You know what that means, don't you?" I think I ruined the moment when I said, yep, I'll have to go unblock the drain before I have a shower. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Take care. All right, guys. Send until, your questions yeah, in. Until next time, yep. stay safe, be healthy and be happy. Bye. Bye. Bye.